Hey, welcome back to Noob School. Today we've got the fantastic Joshua Lysick. Joshua is my good friend. Uh, Joshua, among other things, helped me write this book, Sales for Noobs, at one time, one of the number one sellers on Amazon in our category. Uh, so I met Joshua as my ghostwriter, but we've become friends as well. And uh, I want to talk today about his path to becoming literally the number one ghostwriter in the world, uh, and also a little bit about sales. I think he's a very good salesperson and hypnosis. And uh, if we have time, kind of how you write a book, you know, how he'd recommend you take it on or how you'd work with him. So we'll see. It's going to be about 15 minutes today. We'll see how far we get. But first of all, welcome, Joshua. Thanks for being here. Thank you, John. It's an honor. I appreciate the invitation. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, this seems like old times we had, as my ghostwriter, we had many, I guess every Thursday for what, 10 months, we would spend an hour together like this on the that Zoom. That sounds about right. Yes. <laughs> that was so much fun. So much fun. Um, well, tell us real quickly, uh, as a, as a ghostwriter, tell us a little bit about your path to get there and kind of where you are now. Yes. Yes. And one of the things about my path, John, that it becomes advice for other people. Uh, so I will spin it from story to advice so that every, everyone gets their time's worth for, uh, from listening to this. Yeah. So I did not intend to become a ghostwriter. I intended to become a novelist when I was a youngin. I was homeschooled. And when you're homeschooled, you get to be a high school senior at 15 <laughs> years of age, there <laughs> thereabouts. And one of my hobbies, because we homeschoolers didn't have much socialization or friendships, I read a lot, uh -huh. read quite a bit. I read the entire Encyclopedia Americana, A through Z, like a total nerd. Um, <laughs> my dorkery then extended to fiction. I read quite a bit of fiction. I thought, you know, this is fun. This is fun. I can't really get out into the world, but I can get out into the world through my imagination. I'm going to write these books just like this one day. And uh, it, it, one day came a lot sooner than I expected. By the time I was 20 years old, I had a two book publishing deal for two novels that I had written. As I'm going about marketing those novels and signing copies and taking selfies and appearing on first time uh, debut young author panels. Meanwhile, meanwhile, I had thought, you know, it would be nice if I could actually make some money at this writing thing in addition to authorship. I'm going to call myself a freelance writer, see what happens. Mm -hmm. I got a couple of inquiries, inquiries that became clients, freelance writing clients, mostly writing sales copy and product descriptions and uh, campaign materials, nothing particularly exciting or as novel as novels. Then something interesting happened. Those two paths converged. Those two paths converged. You know what happened, John? You may know this story. You probably do. Tell me. A couple of my freelance writing clients heard about my novels, read them, said, wow, these are good. Can you write my life story like it's a novel, like it's this good? I said, okay, fine, sure, I'll do that for you. And I've been saying, okay, fine, sure, ever since. <laughs> I'm now working on my 63rd, 64th, and 65th books, ghostwritten, full length books, kind of like yours, John. Yeah. Now, where does this become advice? Here's where this becomes advice. So many professional services providers, when they're just getting started selling their own services, uh, or they work for someone that's selling services, they look for proof of concept, that the prospects do, that leads do, the potential clients do, the potential customers do. How do you know that you, that I, how do I know that you can do what you say you can do? I never had that problem, John, because from the very beginning, I had proved I was capable of not writing just one book, but two books, and I was 20 years old. So I give that advice to everyone who, whether they want to become a ghostwriter or they want to become a sales copywriter, the best way to become a successful ghostwriter is to write your own books and publish them under your own name and then have them be good. The yeah. best way to become a copywriter is to create your own materials and write sales letters that sell them very well. And people will say, I want to be like that. Yeah. Can you just do it for me? So you want to strategically cultivate envy jealousy even for your success. Mm -hmm. And that is a great way to get hired. And that advice extrapolates to many, many professions, but most, mostly services, because if you're a services provider, you are first and foremost, a services provider salesperson for your service. Yeah. I love it, Joshua. That's great. And again, one of the things we, 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 we try to pass on to the noobs, you know, the people that are starting to figure it out for themselves, whether it's ghostwriting or sales <clears throat> is to, kind of figure out a way to get there as quick as possible and have some kind of plan. And your plan not only included, uh, you know, two novels by the time you were 20, but you went on and got the, the matching education to go with it. You got two graduate degrees, including the only 
graduate degree available in ghostwriting out in San Diego, I think. Um, is that where you, you got that degree, San Diego? Yeah, Cal, Cal State Long Beach. It's the yeah. only post-secondary ghostwriting program, at least right now, that, that, that I know of. Right. Um, and I thought that actually looks like a, a great, great experience from within the publishing industry. So it's yeah. really a publishing industry uh, credential, and that really helps. It really helps. So well, I, would, I, know, I, I would, am one of these. Go ahead, John. Well, I would just say, you know, if we flop it over to a sales <clears throat> analogy, if somebody really mm -hmm. wanted to get into sales, there's nothing stopping them from getting a commission sales job or you know some lower level where you're just you're start you're getting your chops in before anyone really gives you permission, so I, I love that that idea. Um, let me ask you this: Did you get any formal sales training along the way? I did not. I did not. But however, I did meet people who were familiar with the Sandler sales yeah. uh, model with yeah. Colin, so, so that would be that would be David R. Sandler, I believe his name. Um, what is it? You can't learn how to ride a bicycle at a conference, something like that. That that book, the Sailor Submarine. Yeah, reading a book and a bicycle. It was something like that. Yeah. Was that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so there's uh, there, there there's that. I, I I read that and that made a lot of sense because it wasn't about reaching a particular conclusion. It's a process oriented conversation. Um, so that was one thing. Another thing was. Jay Abraham and his consultative sales model. Now, Jay didn't come up with consultative sales, but the idea there is it's your your position as a salesperson is not make this person buy. Yeah. It's ask specific questions to, to, to find that there is a need for what you do into very simply with honesty and straightforward communication, show how your product or your service meets that need. There is yeah. no manipulation required in consultative sales. And both of those resonated with me because I know that when you have a book, that makes you the authority, that makes you credible, that proves that you are the expert on what it is. Mm -hmm. So, John, as the author of Sales for Noobs, you are the foremost expert on teaching new salespeople, new sales teams, new sales managers, how to be successful salespeople teams and sales leaders yeah. from the get-go. Shorten that learning curve. So just by the fact that you've got that book, John, that makes you the expert on it. I'm glad to hear it. That's good news. Um, well, here's a little bit of a twist on the on the selling stuff. We've talked a little bit about your hypnosis certification and training. How does that play into what you're doing? Is kind of a, a, a different topic for our, our folks to think about. Yes, yes. So I, I'm on, on Twitter at Joshua Lysak, and I tweet often about the overlap of ghostwriting hypnosis and sales. So ghostwriting is you write in someone else's voice and no one can tell that that person didn't write it because it sounds like them. And it's their ideas. So they can say with honesty and integrity, yeah, that's my stuff. Um, you know, sales is obviously how one gets ghostwriting projects. It's mm -hmm. also how one leverages a book to sell your services. Where does hypnosis comes in? Uh, come in? Well, hypnosis is very simply speaking directly to the subconscious mind. That is the beginning and the end of it. And so there are hypnotists, there are hypnotherapists, there are hypno this, that, and the other who help people overcome subconscious obstacles to goals that they have. Mm -hmm. So the subconscious is where our beliefs, desires, needs, wishes, habits, routines, etc., are rooted, where they've taken root. Mm -hmm. And so if you try to, let's say, stop smoking or stop overeating or stop having insomnia, by trying to adjust your routine or, or fix yourself or try this tick, tack, tick, tick, or hack tick, um, you're only like snipping off the leaves of the belief of the routine of the experience, even of the trauma. So if you want to remove the desire to smoke, if you want to remove <clears throat> the urge to overeat, speak to the subconscious mind, uproot that belief, behavior, or habit, or what have you, and it's gone. Mm -hmm. So hypnosis uh, often boasts successful sessions, successful outcomes after one or two sessions. It's quite amazing. Yeah. And so bringing the communication process of hypnosis into writing a book, into writing a sales letter, writing a sales page, what am I doing? I want to converse directly with my buyer's subconscious mind. If they have any beliefs that are going to prohibit them from what it is that they want to achieve, that my product can help them achieve, that my service can help them achieve, 
I want to write sales copy that uproots unhelpful, unproductive, even destructive beliefs and thought patterns. So if you want to write anything that creates permanent and instant change, study hypnosis. And so that's what I've been doing because I follow my own advice. Good, good. I, <clears throat> I've got that on my list. I'll, uh, I'll let you get your cert and then you can tell me, tell me who to use. Um, so this is probably for my benefit <clears throat> as much as anybody else's, but with all those 60, 60 plus clients and me being one of them, what are just a couple of the best practices that they're using over and over again to get new business from the book? Yes, yes. So in your case, who is your book most valuable to? I'll ask you that question and I'll pause there. Who is your book most valuable to? Uh, people who want to go into sales. This is true. This is true. Are there people who have new salespeople who work for them? Yes. Are there people who have a lot of young salespeople who work for them? That if those young salespeople succeeded, that person would get significantly wealthier. <clears throat> yes. That's who the book is for. That's who the book is for. Okay. So here's my thinking. Sales managers, small business owners with a sales force, that's who the book is for. My objective would be something like um, there is this fellow. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a, a, a call out here. There is this fellow. I believe on Twitter. His name is. I'm gonna look him up real quick. Cold email wizard. I okay. think that's his. Uh, that's his thing here. I'm gonna uh, let's see if I can look him up real quick here. Yeah, I think it's cold email wizard. His ex and I have his course by the way. It's 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 legit. So what I would do is I would I probably reach out to his agency or just follow the process that he would. Where find small businesses not micro businesses where it's like two people <laughs> and one of them is the son or the daughter or the spouse yeah, of the of yeah. the owner i would find businesses that you know probably really need your book meaning maybe they're manufacturing companies maybe they're in specific industries or specific verticals and they're of a certain size with a certain number of employees so that you can predict if you pick a hundred companies in that industry and of that size, mm -hmm. you're probably going to be targeting companies who have salespeople who suck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. That's just the way it goes. That's the way it goes. Sales is hard until you learn how to do it right. And then you realize, I can't believe it could be this easy. And yes, it is. So that is what I would do. I would go out on the road. I would hit the road. I'd become a roadie, John, and reach out to these companies and offer them a free chapter of the book. Um, just mention that you've got this book um, because the point of the book is not that they read it and say, okay, thanks, John, we're all done now. Right. It is, wow, I, I want this guy to help me train my seven salespeople and we can get our closing rate up. So um, I know that he's got a really low, low priced uh, course on like putting together a, your sales campaign, your e cold email outreach campaign, mm -hmm. how to find those people. But were it me in that situation, that, that's what I would do. Now, do you okay. need to go on the road? Okay. Maybe not necessarily. If you're part of any organizations or industry <clears throat> associations, it might be easier than you think to get the contact information. But that's what okay. I would do because that's what a lot of companies, uh, founders, even consultants that I've ghost written before, that's what they do is they simply reach out to the founder of the company. Now, you want to go one step further, John. Yeah. You could get 10 copies of your book, 20 copies of your book, and mail your book to the company and offer a complimentary consultation to see if you can help them increase their sales closing up at 25% or something like that, because that's what you've done in the past, blah, 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 blah. So it could okay. be e cold email or targeted direct mail of literally your book to them. Okay. That's what I would do because it's small business owners with sales teams that stand to benefit the most from sales for noobs. Okay. <clears throat> well, Joshua, that's fantastic. Um, again, thanks for this. Can't believe. My pleasure. I can remember when we were just talking about it and what a good job you did as a salesperson making me comfortable that we were going to actually do this, you know, so that's pretty cool. Last question before we got to go. What's your favorite, all, all that you've read and all the encyclopedias you've read, what's your favorite word? I think my favorite word has to be, you know, it's funny because I, I saw him, oh, duh, I just wrote it a few minutes ago leverage. 
Leverage. Leverage. Yes. And, and the reason why is because I use it so often to, to replace that word I just used. Use. Hmm. You know, I'm going to use this, I'm going to use this tool. I'm going to use this person. Like it just like, it sounds a little gross, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you don't want to say utilize because then you sound a little, uh, a little hoity toity. Yeah. You know, I'm going to use this product. I'm going to use this person for help. <clears throat> that doesn't have a great association, but leverage. Ooh. So it, it is a, it is a word that, that elevates your own self-confidence <laughs> simply yeah. by using it. And that's why I like that word so much. And then leverage mm -hmm. itself is the thing that you want with with assets, with people, with any business opportunity. And of course, having an information asset, AKA a book, gives you incredible leverage to generate more leads and close more deals. Good. Well, <clears throat> Joshua, that's a great word. And uh, thank you for spending time with our, our folks today. We really appreciate it. And I appreciate your friendship. And I'm so glad that things are going well for you. I encourage everyone, whether you want to write a book or not, follow Joshua on Twitter. Um, you'll learn a lot and you, you'll laugh a lot. So uh, he's, he's got a good good Twitter game. So thank, thank you, Joshua. Thank you, John. I appreciate the invitation. Thank you okay, so much. Okay, man. Take care. Hey, it's John here. Thanks for listening today. Please check out noobschool.org. That's my website. That's where we have other videos and content that can help you get started in sales. Thank you.